Okay now? Yes, yeah. doctor. Okay. So um, back again, sorry for uh, this uh, technical uh, issues. Uh, again, as I said, the, uh, the aerodynamic uh, video has been adapted in the, uh, in the late 1980s uh, and uh, it became as part of the uh, uh, aerodynamic studies. It has to be synchronized with the uh, filling and voiding uh, phase. Um, the, um, this is the uh, rooms, typical rooms for Eurodynamic. You have to have the X-ray and the chair for it, the commode, the Eurodynamic machine. And here is the instructor, uh, very well uh, leaded and the rooms as well need to be leaded um, uh, during the procedures. Uh, sorry for that. Next. And um, uh, this is the, uh, again, another, that's too fast. Uh, another um, setting where you can do it while the patient lying, especially in the neurogenic bladder patient, when you do isolated uh, pure neurodynamic, and you can, uh, some of these tables also can be adjusted that can, you can put the patient um, in a standing position. There are a few indications for urodynamic, uh, neurological disease, obviously neurogenic bladder. Women who have uh, previously surgery for stress in urinary incontinence, or you plan, so you want to see as Dr. Tarek uh, give a touch about it. Is it uh, intrinsic center deficiency you are dealing with or uh, hypermobility? Uh, in the young men with the obstructive urinary symptom, you'd like to see what's the underlying cause of this because it gives you more detail about the anatomy. post prostatectomy incontinence, uh, that might help you also to identify the potential underlying cause in children uh, as well. Impaired renal function with the urethral uh, over activities where you cannot get uh, IV contrast. Uh, when uh, things don't, don't add up, like the history as well as the urodynamic it's, uh, itself. So a standard urodynamic is not give you the answer for your question. Uh, so um, uh, consider the video urodynamic. The advantage of it is to give you more anatomical information at full, at rest, uh, bladder outline, capacity, shape, if there is any diverticulae, if there is a fistula, uh, and also when the patient is straining and coughing, uh, and the also when the, the descent, the movement of it, uh, and the bladder neck competency. Uh, also, it has the ability during the voiding phase, if there is a, the speed and extent of the bladder neck uh, opening, uh, if there is a reflux, if there is urethral narrowing, um, and also tell you about the post void residual once you're done. The, uh, the, it, it gives you more about the bladder shape. And if there is trabeculation, diverticular in the bladder per se, the pelvic floor support activities during the filling and voiding, the bladder neck, ref, presence of reflux, and the stricture, uh, if there is a history and the residual. Uh, the technique uh, comply with the uh, ionizing uh, radiation um, uh, instruction or regulation and the bladder filled with the contrast medium and the pressure measurement during the filling and avoiding as well, X-ray imaging at the interval to ensure that you don't offer exposing yourself and the patient to the radiation, do it intermittently. And you can screen the patient a, AP, oblique and lateral when you have suspicion or doubt about certain findings. It has more advantage to provide combination of structural and functional information. It can be used to review uh, for meeting and, and teaching purpose as well. That is advantage, obviously, if there is radiation, you cannot do it in a pregnant woman as well. The extra cost of the contrast, the uh, unnatural voiding environment uh, with the X-ray over there, and more sensitive to artifact uh, with the um, uh, having a video aerodynamic. So this is, as you can see, normal maturation uh, pattern. Uh, and this is the, uh, the, how it looked like uh, in the, uh, uh, the Euroflow. You see the, uh, the bladder is full and the, the bladder neck is open, wide, serial urethra, and the contrast is going down smoothly. Uh, for a patient where, uh, where when you are doing falsalfa leak point pressure and you see leaking uh, during this, and uh, look at the descent here, uh, and uh, of the urethra and look at, at here also, there is a leaking and that's all filling phase. Um, and here you see more uh, of the 
uh, information about the contrast leaking during the filling phase and the descent of the urethra. While in, in a patient, uh, as you see here, the, the uh, typical uh, void here is the, the, the patient is uh, like obstructive bottom with the high PDQ max. So you have a problem with, with the voiding uh, phase. And uh, uh, to find out and to give you more information, uh, look at this. The patient is having uh, urethral obstruction from the uterine prolapse. So it's pulling the, the, the whole pelvis and causing obstruction in a female. And this is a typical uh, uh, procedentia when the uterus is coming out through the vagina and causing the obstruction. And you see uh, uh, the dimple shape, we call it um, uh, an obstruction. Um, and that's significantly prolapse, as you see below the level of the uh, simstis pupus. Uh, this is the uh, neurogenic uh, uh, bladder. And you see the typical shape during the system metrogram phase. Uh, uh, and uh, you see the uh, Christmas tree uh, shape of the bladder. That's not the typical uh, shape of the bladder uh, during the filling. It should be very well uh, uh, circular or spherical. Uh, and the, this is the reflux also you'll be able to predict it uh, during the uh, filling phase in system metrogram and neurogenic bladder. So uh, the bladder shape uh, and the neck diverticuli uh, and the presence of physical ureteric reflux um, uh, during this uh, uh, studies. The other one is the, uh, there is a fistula here uh, and uh, you, you, you are able to see it. The, the contrast is going out during the hoiding phase and you'll be able to pick it up. Uh, I'm not saying this is the only investigation, but it's incidental finding as well uh, during the procedures uh, when you do urodynam video urodynamic. And here is the, not the typical spherical shape and definitely this patient has a bladder augment and you see the augment on the top of the, uh, the bladder. Um, the, when you have a physical vaginal fistula also, you might pick it up with this and you see the fistula, the contrast going there during the folding phase uh, to the vagina. Um, Again, this is a, a pre augmentation We see significant reflux and Christmas tree. Uh, and there is diverticulum in the back. You've done the augmentation, reflux disappear um, uh, after that. So uh, these are a few examples that you've seen. The, the video aerodynamic can help you out in uh, giving you more detailed information uh, anatomically. And the, the good video aerodynamic practice when you have x-ray tube far away from the patient and um, uh, not uh, to be close uh, to the patient with, uh, and not too close as well to the patient. So you need to minimize the screening uh, time uh, and the staff uh, stand in the low uh, scatter area away from the field uh, before they start shooting. The staff stand as far as possible and you need to use appropriate shielding uh, lead uh, up front. There are a few important issues need to be considered as well. You need to ask about the uh, iodine allergy uh, complete patient identification uh, information, and you need to inquire and document about the pregnancy, uh, particularly in child bearing age, bearing age, to ensure empty bladder at the end of the um, uh, video urodynamic by uh, using a catheter if the patient unable to empty the bladder completely. Uh, so when do you use the screen? Uh, at the regular interval all the time during the filling and voiding? in the filling before the contrast installation, when the patient cuff and straining, and before voiding. Uh, these are the, uh, uh, the shot where, where you take them. During the voiding, you start with the voiding at the E, dip few max, and at the end of the voiding. In conclusion, video aerodynamic or systemetry gives additional information that can be useful in management. It is costly and gives extra ray exposure to both the staff as well as the patient. Its use should be confined to the certain condition and where the extra structural information may affect the management. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Maher. Uh, we're moving now for the next two lectures, uh, ambulatory urodynamic and um, special conditions with Dr. Yahya Ghazwani, Dr. Dr. Yahya. So I will share my uh, screen now.
بالنسبه ل Is it clear? Yes, clear. Okay. So, um, you need to, okay, you will start from the beginning. Uh, Just click on the first slide, then uh, go to the other. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so yes, um, in this short um, lecture about uh, um, um, ambulatory neurodynamic, we will uh, we will talk mainly um, about uh, ambulatory neurodynamic, where unfortunately I think. Uh, 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 no one was uh, was able to uh, see it, and it's only like in uh, research uh, uh, centers. And uh, but it's it's good to have an idea about it. So um, uh, probably like uh, you have the interest, and uh, in some cases uh, maybe you will uh, request to uh, do it or to have it for your uh, patient. But I'm talking personally uh, and. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, I didn't get chance to uh, um, to uh, to have it or to uh, like uh, do it on, uh, on on patients, and uh, um, uh, but it's, it's good to know uh, about a uh, little bit about it. And uh, if we come to indications, usually uh, uh, it's it's not different than the indication for uh, other urodynamic. But if the conventional urodynamic studies fail to provide any answer uh, to the question uh, that uh, uh, time will go for ambulatory urodynamic. And uh, as we mentioned that most of the cases uh, uh, that um, is um, suitable for uh, uh, urodynamic, you need, uh, uh, or you'll probably will get the uh, answer from the uh, multi-channel urodynamic, both, I mean, um, the uh, conventional urodynamic or free urodynamic. In some cases, probably you'll go for ambulatory urodynamic. Um, which is uh, uh, just like minority. It's the situation in which uh, conventional urodynamic may be uh, unsuitable for those patients, uh, neurogenic lower tract uh, uh, dysfunction, if you didn't get again answer from a conventional urodynamic, evaluation of therapies for lower tract uh, uh, dysfunction. Um, the advantage uh, of uh, uh, the conventional urodynamic, it's a, a natural uh, way of um, or uh, uh, it's evaluation for the natural way of uh, filling the, uh, the bladder. Um, it's less embarrassing for the uh, for patients. Uh, usually they will do it and, um, uh, while they are uh, performing their daily activity, dressed and it's not in front of people, uh, so their privacy uh, will uh, maintain. The pressure are recorded for several hours from three to four hours, so this probably will give more uh, um, uh, idea about uh, uh, the changes that happen while in conventional neurodynamic you are not have the um, uh, uh, luxury to do um, study for this long time. It's increased diagnostic accuracy in a detection of over uh, um, trozer overactive bladder, uh, where uh, uh, again in some cases uh, in conventional neurodynamic probably you will miss that. Um, unfortunately, it's time consuming test. Uh, again, discomfort for the patient. It requires um, trained and dedicated personnel, uh, technician, and also uh, uh, um, uh, patients needs to be uh, uh, like um, um, familiar or uh, um, highly educated to know how to uh, uh, deal with these uh, uh, wires that you will be connected to. Uh, there is no published data on uh, reproducibility of this study, uh, not uh, very helpful in deciding uh, on management, it shows large inter-individual variation in young men, and it requires specialized equipment. Um, unfortunately, uh, yes, we are uh, probably uh, um, 
uh, able to detect more dystrosal overactivity and to diagnose it. But again, there is a high rate of abnormal dystrosal overactivity using this uh, ambulatory machine in asymptomatic control patients. Um, it's contraindicated in poorly patient, uh, poor patient mobility, and uh, if they have cognitive impairment and ability to follow instructions. So we have special people and uh, special patients to do it for them. Severe constipation activity uh, or active urinary tract infection. And this is also a common uh, contraindication for other uh, conventional urodynamic if medical condition which limit patient uh, participation. <clears throat> and this is depends on. Uh, uh, your uh, selection of those patients who will do for them ambulatory or dynamic. Um, you need abdominal and physical, uh, physical pressure lines. This is uh, um, uh, mandatory, um, bad for urine loss measurement, uh, fighting dairy, host, uh, host computer, and a lightweight portable recording device. This is uh, uh, to um, mark the event that happen like leakage or uh, activity adequate battery capacity and fast frequency response. Uh, we have two systems available in the market like old system and new system. The old system is electronic catheters mounted micro tip transducer. Um, it's also uh, having a large recorder box and it lacks patient event marker capability. So the sensation data and timing for urgency void accidents, usually it's not uh, uh, well uh, uh, recorded by this old system. While in the new system, there is wireless Bluetooth technique, uh, online view uh, of recordings, Windows software provide uh, fully automated analysis and pressure data leakage uh, flow and EMG, and also uh, this is for 24 hour study. So it seems to be more, uh, uh, accurate in, uh, uh, than the old uh, system. Uh, the recording system is available. Uh, we have been from more than one company uh, from um, a system called uh, Gobi or Labory Medical uh, or Lonam and also from uh, MMS. And these are also uh, like MMS and Labory, they are uh, the main uh, mark, um, marketing and uh, making um, for uh, the uh, uh, conventional urodynamics um, uh, system that we are using. Uh, they have newer system, small remote control attachment to capture uh, data compatible uh, with water, air, and micro tip uh, catheters. In preparing patients for ambulatory urodynamic, uh, you need to have an information leaflet to explain the test um, prior to uh, uh, the appointment and um, uh, comfortably full bladder, uh, Euroflow, and urine analysis to be uh, performed before. Uh, ability urodynamic test uh, can be performed if there are no signs of urinary tract infection. As you mentioned, this is a contraindication, and they need to wear uh, comfortable clothes um, uh, for, you know, to uh, um, uh, leave them like uh, in um, comfortable uh, um, uh, time and walking while they are having these uh, 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 connections and they need to empty their bowel uh, uh, if uh, possible. Um, it's similar to laboratory uh, systematry in the technique. Catheters are inserted into the bladder and in the rectum. Sufficient catheter length into the bladder and the rectum. This should be also uh, um, maintained. Catheters should be uh, securely tapped adjacent to the um, um, or taped just to the uh, anus and ex uh, external urethral meters to reduce the risk of uh, falling uh, of these catheters and also to reduce the risk of artifacts where the artifact unfortunately is like more common with this uh, type of urodynamic transducer set to zero as in conventional urodynamic and the patient can then dress and the catheters can be connected to the ambulatory urodynamic recording system. Um, prior to commencing the recording, the patient asked to cuff. This is for as a part of calibration and um, to check for intraphysical, abdominal, and, uh, substra and uh, the uh, subtracted detrosal pressure. Ambulatory urodynamic uh, machine can be started if there is a, a similar increase of the intraphysical and, and, and abdominal pressure, and the subtracted detrosal pressure doesn't change. 
and uh, if there is any problem, the, uh, um, it, it needs to be uh, rectified before commencing the study. <clears throat> then the patient will be able to leave the uh, urodynamic uh, room um, if, it, uh, um, if this is okay, but we you need to make sure that he or she understands and able to follow the instructions record on uh, dairy all the urinary symptoms reported during ambulatory urodynamic test. And uh, since, since the symptoms are compared against the pressure recording, an accurate recording of uh, symptoms and the times when they occur is essential uh, for the uh, uh, final uh, diagnosis. Um, they need to uh, record uh, if there is any urine leakage and uh, has not yet uh, or has not yet standardized how to record it, but they can record it by uh, as as um, electronic pad or remote control with event uh, marker or um, completing a urinary symptom daily just like that, and they can use all uh, these uh, um, available uh, methods for, uh, for recording. <clears throat> in terms of urgency uh, or urgent continence or pain uh, or uh, voluntary void, uh, time and volume of fluid intake, feeling of uh, catheter displacement and uh, any proactive uh, um, Maneuvers, running, washing hands, coughing, these should be also uh, recorded. And uh, also, um, uh, we need to instruct patients how to use event buttons in the uh, ambulatory urodynamic device itself and to drink about 200 to 400 ml per hour, uh, that to mimic uh, here, uh, his or her uh, daily uh, activity. And um, uh, then, um, or a fluid just uh, load before the starting or uh, the initial, uh, the beginning of the um, test by like drinking one liter uh, for 30 minutes. Um, but uh, this fluid load is contraindicated um, if the uh, ampulatory urodynamic probably would take longer time. <clears throat> um, Continuous, continuing the instructions to the patient, patient need to return to the urodynamic room if uh, every hour to check the system is recording the pressure correctly, correctly or and subtraction is uh, accurate. So this is a, like a, a type of uh, calibration. And again, this probably will be like uh, um, some uh, disadvantage uh, patient uh, for patient. Um, if he need or she needs to void, he needs to come uh, back to the urodynamic room. If one of the catheter falls out, so uh, the diagnosis definitely will be uh, affected. If the patient need to uh, empty his bowel, uh, so uh, um, uh, the catheter or the rectal catheter need to be uh, removed and reinserted. Um, <clears throat> In terms of uh, analysis and uh, interpretation of this uh, um, type of urodynamic, assessment of uh, quality of data, this is again uh, important, and uh, to make sure that trace is active, if the uh, baseline is uh, static or highly uh, variable, uh, if the uh, cuff test is re regularly present, and um, if the uh, recording of the uh, detrosal pressure by subtracting is uh, uh, um, uh, adequate. And at the end of the test, um, or if, if any problem arises to reduce the risk of missing or uninterpreted uh, data, um, the use of a detailed patient diary or even, uh, event uh, markers on the uh, um, uh, system, uh, this is strongly recommended to improve the analysis of events um, during the, um, the study. So all these should be included and uh, considered during uh, analyzing and interpreting these uh, uh, traces. Um, in conclusion, it's a valuable and effective second line test. As I mentioned, it's not the first line that you need to think about it. And um, uh, if uh, there is failure of the conventional urodynamic or even feed urodynamic to um, give the, uh, um, diagnosis, then uh, probably you will uh, consider this um, uh, ambulatory urodynamic. 
if the ambulatory urodynamic will improve the outcome uh, of um, continent surgery and um, all, or any type of treatment, so that time uh, you, will, uh, you will consider it. Um, it's time consuming for both patients and also for the uh, um, uh, uh, urodynamic uh, laboratory uh, uh, people, and uh, this needs to be explained and understand uh, well by, uh, by both. Uh, it requires more experience as well as a specialized equipment and um, as I mentioned, it's unfortunate it is not uh, available in all uh, centers. And to make the most of its diagnostic capability and to avoid offer diagnosis of uh, detrosal of activity, which is one of the, the disadvantage of this type of uh, urodynamic, a detailed uh, record of urinary symptoms during the test is always uh, recommended. So this is uh, the talk about uh, ambulatory uh, urodynamic. Uh, if there is any question, uh, it's, it's welcome. And uh, uh, before moving to the uh, last uh, lecture, which will be about uh, um, special condition in uh, uh, urodynamic. Uh, any lecture regarding this uh, presentation from the audience? Uh, we have one question uh, posted uh, regarding uh, Dr. Maher. Dr. Maher with us. Yes, please. Uh, actually, one of the candidates was asking what is the views that you take in urodynamic? What is the use of urodynamic? Views, the views, the like AP lateral view. Uh, I think the views, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, um, First of all, depending what you are looking uh, at, but um, usually if you are doing supine, that's the only way is to do AP. But if you are doing, uh, you're looking for a stressing, for, depending what you're looking for. Commonly, we use it with the angle. If you are gonna be AP lateral, so you can, you don't have the, the uh, symphysis pupus covering the, uh, um, the bladder neck. So you need to see it with an angle. So you should do an angle if you're gonna do AP or you should do it lateral view. So by this, you see uh, the bladder neck. But if you are purely looking for the bladder per se, and the, you're looking for reflux AP uh, is the way to go. Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, so now moving to the next picture, Dr. Yahya, Yes. Um, actually, this lecture was a covered well uh, in all uh, uh, presentation, uh, but here just I will uh, um, emphasize on uh, certain points, like in uh, pediatrics or male foiling dysfunction, uh, female foiling dysfunction in neurogenic uh, patients and in uh, elderly. Um, urodynamic uh, or doing urodynamic in children, it's um, um, a bit challenging, but uh, in, in, in more than one uh, aspect. First of all, um, uh, when you will do it, and uh, what are the cases that you are doing for them, uh, uh, urodynamic, uh, and, uh, and then how you will do it, a frequency of doing it, uh, all these should be considered before, like, um, or when you are uh, dealing with uh, 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 doing urodynamic in, uh, in, in children. Uh, our colleague, uh, pediatric urologists, they are, uh, uh, usually familiar and they're the best people to do this uh, urodynamic and to uh, follow up uh, the um, indications for uh, doing uh, urodynamics in uh, this, um, uh, in this uh, uh, age group. There are three main groups of children are considered for urodynamic studies. Uh, those with um, neurological disease, and uh, definitely they will have some sort of uh, physicurethral uh, dysfunction. And um, like in cases of uh, myelomeningocele and uh, neurogenic uh, uh, or spina bifida, uh, children with low intract symptoms or dysfunction who are coming to the clinic just complaining of uh, Foiding dysfunction, and this is based on the uh, <clears throat> evaluation and assessment, and probably at the end you will reach uh, to uh, conclusion that you need to do a urodynamic for those uh, category of, category of uh, 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 children. 
Uh, some children who were diagnosed with non-neurological uh, uh, con uh, congenital abnormalities, <clears throat> and it may uh, affect their uh, um, physical urethral uh, dysfunction um, by indirect way. So this is also another uh, indication in this uh, uh, age group categories. Um, again, <clears throat> As I mentioned, it's like different than other, other age group. Um, they need a child-friendly uh, environment. Um, the presence of parents is uh, an essential uh, for uh, this age group. Um, and um, you need to prepare uh, yourself before starting this study. Again, this is also applicable on uh, uh, doing neurodynamic in adult, but you know, in, in, in those uh, special uh, age, if you like uh, uh, miss or you want to repeat the test, sometimes it will be uh, uh, difficult. So you need to prepare yourself uh, beforehand. <clears throat> in cases of uh, non um, uh, neurological uh, defects, as I mentioned, uh, it may reflect on uh, voiding uh, physical urethral uh, function, as in cases of uh, urethral falls in, in, in male. So they, uh, uh, they are need to do urodynamic and they need to uh, follow in similar fashion to uh, myelomeningocele uh, children with early urodynamics uh, if there is upper uh, urinary tract dilatation. Other abnormalities, which is non-neurological, but may reflect on the uh, uh, physical urethral function, like if there is anorectal abnormalities. And uh, the frequency of voiding dysfunction in these children depends on the extent of the abnormality. And if there is presence of associated uh, sacral bony defects, so the higher lesion um, is more likely to uh, uh, disrupt the uh, voiding uh, and uh, lead to a uh, voiding dysfunction in this uh, uh, patients. And here, uh, if, because they will definitely go for surgery, probably you need to do urodynamic uh, pre and post uh, surgery. <clears throat> Uh, if there is a normal children, I mean, that there is no congenital abnormalities, uh, no ne neurological abnormalities, but they are coming complaining of like uh, low neurotic symptoms and um, avoiding dysfunction. So you will take them definitely uh, to uh, uh, different ways of assessment and evaluation, but eventually probably may you need to do uh, on, on some of them uh, urodynamic. Like if there, is, if there are cases, if you are expecting the trousal of activity or dysfunctional voiding, like in case of non-neurogenic, neurogenic bladder. And uh, if there is a, a physical urethric reflux. So um, those uh, uh, kids that um, you need to consider uh, the effect of the uh, changes that may happen in the bladder and the function of the bladder on their upper tract because you know, they are like uh, uh, growing up. So you need to uh, at least um, uh, share the prognosis with, uh, um, with other uh, specialties uh, who following also this, these patients with you uh, from nephrology point of view, or uh, even from uh, like pediatric urology uh, point of view. But as I mentioned, like most of these cases done by a pediatric urologist, but if you are involved to do for them urodynamic that you need what they are, you need to know what they are looking for. Um, the um, urodynamic technique in children, uh, it's probably a bit different than the, uh, that in adult. So in uh, filling that you need to uh, know the bladder capacity. So you will, uh, you will uh, fill in uh, like a 10% of the expected bladder volume per minute. So expected bladder volume can be calculated by the formula of 30 plus 30 times uh, age in, uh, in years. And um, perform urodynamic under sedation or prior to the urodynamic, uh, but probably catheters under anesthesia. This is sometimes also uh, um, um, special for pediatric population. <clears throat> The same indication will be applicable on uh, pediatric uh, population, uh, the same like an adult, and the main, uh, um, the main indication is to reproduce uh, patient symptoms, and you make sure that the result of this test will affect the management of uh, patients. 
Um, if the empirical treatment failed and you need to do invasive therapy uh, or the pediatric and the pediatric urologist need to do invasive therapy or to be done by other specialty like surgery or neurosurgery or orthopedic. So uh, at that time, you need to consider doing uh, urodynamic um, um, for those uh, kids to um, to confirm the uh, presumptive diagnosis and also to have like a baseline study. And um, if the screening tests have been shown to be uh, abnormal, as I mentioned, like those, pay, those uh, type of kids are presenting with non-neurological or uh, pointing dysfunction not related to congenital abnormalities, and you did for them all the tests that available, but still you didn't treat to, the, to diagnosis, so probably you'll consider urodynamic. Urodynamic in, in women, it's well covered by uh, Dr. May uh, yesterday, and um, that's, you know, in, 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 as I mentioned in the first uh, lecture that uh, usually uh, stress urine incontinence is more common in, 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 in men, and in, in women than men. So that's uh, probably one of the things that you need to consider. And uh, when you are doing uh, urodynamic in these, uh, in, these, uh, in, in women, um, again, they can have overactive bladder symptoms, frequency, if there is mixed uh, urinary incontinence, uh, so all uh, recurrent urinary tract infections. So all these probably an indication uh, uh, for uh, uh, urodynamic. Um, Urodynamics has a role in future or further defining the underlying uh, physical urethral uh, disorders when the empirical treatment uh, failed and you are a, or you want to go for more invasive uh, treatment. Again, uh, urodynamic in men was covered yesterday by uh, Dr. May, but here just like a refreshment. So um, uh, we are doing urodynamic in men uh, with urinary tract symptoms are uh, due to three uh, main causes. If there is a detrosal of activity, uh, bladder outlet obstruction, and you this uh, test probably will change your management or at least will give a hint about the prognosis of invasive procedure, or if there is a detrosal or, or a suspected detrosal under, under activity. Um, post prostatectomy problems, this is um, post radical prostatectomy mainly, and um, can present with overactive bladder symptoms that will suggest the total of activity, or if there is a, uh, symptoms suggestive of uh, obstruction or uh, urinary, uh, post prostatectomy urinary incontinence. So, this is also one of the uh, um, um, certain indications in men uh, for uh, urodynamic. In elderly, uh, if you are dealing with elderly patients, you need to consider that um, uh, the changes that can happen uh, with aging, uh, like increasing phosphoid residual. Uh, you need to know also that there are more comorbidities in elderly that can happen and will affect definitely the, uh, the um, physical urethral function. So this, you need to uh, put it in mind before performing uh, um, uh, urodynamic in this uh, category of patients. And um, also you need to make sure and to, uh, uh, provide them in uh, with uh, uh, suitable places because uh, you know they are like uh, fair uh, or they are frail to uh, fall. So uh, the precautions for this these category of patients need to be also uh, considered. And um, uh, usually it's mainly uh, or, or used for um, diagnosis of the uh, other indications, but. Uh, you need to consider the uh, presence of overactive bladder on those patients. Uh, the patients is more probably common than other than uh, in, in, in young adult, and also to consider post void uh, uh, residual. Neurogenic or neurological patients. Um, this is one of the uh, common uh, clinical practice that you are performing urodynamic study on uh, neurological uh, uh, insulted patients uh, with. Uh, uh, either uh, spinal cord injuries, spinal cord disease, or uh, brain disease like uh, stroke or uh, Parkinson or multiple sclerosis. So this is also a special category of patients that probably you need to consider for them some uh, uh, some um, uh, features or like uh, things that you need to consider in uh, in, in, in your mind or to put it in uh, in, in your mind. 
Um, neurological disease will uh, produce or affect the uh, uh, foiling function in uh, uh, um, usually two main uh, way by um, detrosal of activity, neurogenic detrosal of activity, uh, which differ from the uh, idiopathic detrosal of activity, or uh, functional bladder outlet obstruction mainly by uh, DSD, uh, where uh, this is secondary to urethral uh, overactivity, uh, which happen usually in spinal cord injury. Um, also in, in, in uh, MS and some cases of myelomeningocele. So consider that probably you will find some findings which differ than other, uh, other population. Um, lower motor neuron uh, injury will affect the bladder sensation, uh, will lead to uh, detrosal, uh, will, uh, or absence of detrosal contractility. Uh, the bladder compliance may be affected and the sphincter function also affected and the uh, foiling usually by uh, straining. While in the upper uh, motor neuron lesion, the bladder, again, the bladder sensation will be lost, but uh, the detrosal will be overactive and the bladder compliance may be uh, again affected, but here there is, uh, you need to consider uh, um, uh, the, uh, um, the function, the sphincter function is normal during uh, filling, but may be uh, overactive during uh, foiling. And this is like uh, um, uh, DSD. Um, in condition like MS and myelomeningocele, the neurological lesion are more complex and the button is less constant because of the lesions are uh, incomplete. And this is also we need to put it in mind not uh, uh, to generalize the uh, uh, urodynamic findings in all patients, probably you'll find, uh, uh, definitely you'll find like a difference in, uh, uh, in the struck patients in their, uh, Euro, in their presentation and also in their urodynamic uh, findings. So not all CVAs uh, will, uh, will produce the same uh, symptoms, I mean, uh, avoiding dysfunction symptoms and also not to produce the same uh, urodynamic findings. This is applicable in all uh, neurological uh, uh, disease. Um, the filling rate in, in, in these people, uh, it's like uh, an important to consider because uh, you don't want them to go in what, would, what we call autonomic uh, dysreflexia, especially in spinal cord uh, injury patients uh, in cervical spinal cord injuries. And this should start, the filling rate should start at 10 ml per minute. And if there is no raise in the vitrosal pressure, then may you will increase it up to 20 or 30, but you need to uh, monitor sometimes the blood pressure and ECG uh, to avoid any autonomic dysreflexia. And this is usually, uh, as I mentioned, mainly, mainly in patients with spinal cord injury, especially above T6 level. And, um, Check blood pressure if it's more, uh, or the blood pressure is increasing more than 20 mil, uh, mil mercury uh, above the uh, resting level. And uh, in cases with um, uh, teratoplasia or hyperplasia, they are typically having low uh, uh, blood pressure. So um, in cases, if you have like signs of uh, um, uh, tonomic dysreflexia, uh, as like a headache or sweating above the level of the injury. Uh, so um, you need to uh, immediately uh, be alarmed and, um, uh, and prepare yourself and your uh, people in the uh, urodynamic laboratory um, uh, suite to be uh, ready for, uh, for, uh, for that. So um, you need to meter the blood pressure and pulse and uh, sit person upright if you can and uh, lower the legs and uh, loosen if any tight clothing or um, uh, leg uh, straps. Remove uh, compression stocking and any abdominal binder. Uh, check for bladder distension. If it's distended, you need to empty the bladder and also uh, you need to check for uh, uh, stool uh, impaction and sometimes you need to evacuate these, uh, the stool impaction. Um, so there are some medications that you need to consider, uh, like mainly it's uh, a nitro uh, lingual spray. Uh, this can be given as a spray or like even by uh, transdermal patches to chest in the upper, uh, upper part of the chest. And you need to uh, monitor the blood pressure frequently. So I think this is the end of uh, my uh, talk here. And if there is any question, I will be able to answer, inshallah. Uh, other than that, I will leave the floor for you, Dr. May. 
Thank you, Dr. Ta'at Qariahi, for uh, this nice presentation. Uh, we have, yes, a few questions. Uh, uh, somebody is asking, can you explain the UDS procedure under sedation in children? Uh, if you have an answer, Dr. Yahya, or? Well, um, it's, you know, um, in, in, in the pediatric population, we are looking mainly for uh, systometry. And uh, so that's, uh, you know, you know the bladder capacity, so uh, you'll be able to uh, put this, um, or to, uh, as, I mean, um, regulate your flow according to the, um, to the bladder capacity and monitor if there is any overactivity, if there is any poorly compliant bladder while you are uh, filling. It's difficult and uh, to be to to perform under under sedation and uh, I mean uh, heavy sedation, and uh, but I'm sure our colleague in, in pediatric urology, uh, uh, if they need or they want, uh, uh, they uh, usually adjust the uh, the dose of the uh, sedation with uh, with anesthesia, but. Uh, uh, it's not advisable to do it unless if you have like a special indication for uh, for that or if there is no uh, no complaints from the pediatric uh, patient. But again, as a, what I'm looking for is a systematry, so probably that you need to be able to uh, monitor this uh, these findings uh, uh, while you are filling the bladder and monitoring it under uh, under uh, with uh, under like um, uh, traces and follow the traces uh, while you are filling the uh, the bladder. Uh, I'm not a pediatric urologist, but this is the uh, answer that I am uh, able, if there is any one of my colleagues, he will be able to comment. I um, really welcome that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would like to add to your comments, Dr. Yahya, thank you for it. Uh, actually, yes, in pediatric, I totally agree with you. Sedation will let you lose some of the information that you're looking uh, for. If you are pushed to do it, you know that when you're giving a sedation, we're giving the order and uh, we give it sometimes in uh, in divided doses we don't give the full dose at once uh, unless you are pushed with a non-compliant non-cooperative child uh, then you need to buy it looking for specific finding but you keep in mind that you are missing some of the important thing that's why uh, we're asking in the pediatric they need to be treated in a special way to calm down and yes, the only issue is just to put the catheter in, but otherwise the urodynamic per se, it doesn't make a big difference for them. So usually they are anxious just only to have the catheter, but whenever the issue of catheterization, sometimes I, I personally, when I do it for children, I, I put the catheter myself, bringing toys, candies, and that will just uh, let them a little bit distract their uh, concentration and their uh, uh, refusal to have the catheterization. Uh, another question, Dr. Yahya, uh, when should we consider cardiac monitoring while doing urodynamic in a patient with low level spinal cord injury? Is the dysreflexia an issue? With low level? Well, yes, this is the question. So yeah. I think we need to redefine the dysreflexia, the autonomic for them again. Yes, uh, usually uh, autonomic dysreflexia, uh, uh, it's more frequent in patients with uh, cervical spinal cord injury above T level. And uh, the higher the level, the more common to have autonomic dysreflexia. It's less likely and really to have it in, uh, uh, below uh, T6. <clears throat> but that's, I mean, uh, uh, Usually, if you have patients, you um, they will uh, they will uh, they are they are known, but and you, need, you will be able to prepare your uh, yourself. If you have uh, T six and above uh, spinal cord injury, you need to prepare yourself by um, uh, uh, preparing the um, um, stretcher itself, uh, maybe like uh, the ECG monitoring, uh, blood pressure monitoring to be uh, standby. Uh, personally, I didn't see any patient with lower level to have uh, uh, autonomic dysreflexia. I'm not, I'm not saying it's an impossible, uh, but uh, it's, 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 less, uh, it's less likely. And this is related to the sympathetic uh, uh, overflow that uh, can happen. And, you know, I mean, uh, the level of the sympathetic uh, uh, chain and uh, where it ends. So this is the uh, main uh, pathophysiology of autonomic uh, dysreflexia. Um, 
<clears throat> these are the, uh, this, is the, this is my answer for this question. Uh, if, uh, if there is a low level, probably I'm not need to prepare, but yeah, in, 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 in general, neurodynamic, uh, neurodynamic uh, lab that you are prepared uh, always for these unusual uh, extraordinary conditions and uh, you, you can be ready at any time. But as I mentioned, it's more common and the more it's uh, like more and more common in high level uh, injuries. If you are like lower level, it's, it's, it's less, uh, less, less chance to get uh, autonomic uh, dysreflexia. Okay, uh, still more questions are coming. Uh, so uh, uh, one is asking if I have a patient with a recurrent UTI, should be given single dose of antibiotic as prophylaxis pre procedure. Uh, if you don't mind, I will answer this one. Yes, you, you have a lot of patients who have sometimes persistent even UTI, uh, and you're afraid of giving better risk of uh, developing uh, infection or pyrinephritis, even sometimes with some of patients with urodynamic. So personally, what I do, I after these patients are, are treated their UTI with antibiotic, I, I keep them on a regular uh, antibiotic course uh, while doing the urodynamic. So it's not only a single dose, they will take it uh, like for uh, three days, one day before and two days after, just to uh, be sure they don't uh, have the attack of recurrent at the same time while you're doing the urodynamic and looking for answer. Uh, somebody is asking, uh, can I get benefit from this course as a pediatric urologist? Can I practice it in neonates and infants? Uh, well, uh, all what is mentioned in this course, it is all the same basics for urodynamic. Uh, the differences in pediatric uh, when you do it is the calculations and the putting the catheter, the issues of doing the uh, sedation or not, the crying baby, how do you interpret the findings that you see because you will have continuous abdominal contractions and when should you do it actually from the beginning? Uh, like neonates, uh, personally, uh, I do a lot of pediatrics, but personally I don't do, and I don't prefer to do anything below uh, four months after four months, uh, we can start doing it for them. Uh, but again, the same basics apply to all, but you need to keep in mind the calculations are different, like for the capacity, should we do sedation or not? You need to know that you will miss some of the information, but you might buy it for uh, non-compliant or non-cooperative uh, patients. The, crying baby, how to read this urodynamic when they have continuous contractions while crying or screaming all the time and their continuous movement. Uh, I think uh, we have two more questions before we move to the workshop. Uh, if you have urethrostomies and VUR, how can you do the systometry? Uh, do you need to close the urethrostomies? Well, if I understand your question properly. This patient uh, is having VUR, and you, this is an in urethrostomy or uh, or not. If you are going to do a cystometry with an in urethrostomy, uh, the in urethrostomy it will be straightforward. You put the catheter inside, but if you open the ureter from the side. Uh, yes, you need to close the urethrostomies, but uh, if he has already a VUR, uh, this is um, what you can do is you can do a video urodynamic for them, but it will be difficult to close the, the ureters uh, unless you put uh, any inflatable uh, catheters inside. Or the other way around, you need to have uh, a full planning for this boy before you go ahead and close it. Otherwise, you will do the reimplantation and then do the systematry after doing the reimplantation uh, for them and closing their urethrostomy. Uh, last question What are the studies that could not be done in infants and children? Uh, well, uh, usually in pediatric, the first thing we do for them is the after having the history and their examination, and you have whatever was the category of the child, if he's a PVR or a neurogenic, or they have 
a sort of voiding dysfunction. And you have their ultrasound and the DCUG, for example, not with them, and you have the full picture of the patient. According to these three categories, you will decide. Some of these patients, you can do as simple as urodyne, uh, uh, sorry, as simple as uroflow with EMG. That will help you to know, like a screening test, to know how things are and to take it from there to do what you need to do. If the child has reflux, then if you are deciding to do a urodynamic, it needs to be a video urodynamic because you have the refluxing at the same time and it will help you to know what, uh, when the reflux is happening and what is the pressure when the reflux was happening in that child. Uh, I hope that will make the uh, answer clear uh, regarding the video dynamic and the pediatrics. Any more questions before we move on? Okay, so we're all going to leave this platform. Uh, kindly follow the link for the workshop and each one of the candidates will be assigned to uh, a workshop room and we'll meet you there uh, in one minute, please. So we're leaving here. See you. Okay, Dr. May. Uh
So uh, welcome everybody back again. So uh, uh, we're coming now toward the end of our course. Uh, again, uh, if you have any question uh, toward the end, we're happy to answer. Uh, kindly post your questions. And uh, after the course, uh, hopefully you grab uh, as much as uh, possible of uh, information. And uh, hopefully most of you or all of you participated uh, and get the maximum benefit from the workshop. Uh, you will receive action evaluation form uh, after finishing the course, uh, maybe by tomorrow or after two days. Uh, after filling the evaluation, you will receive the certificate and uh, the, uh, with the CME. Uh, kindly, if you have any posts, any questions, uh, any uh, comments, we're happy to answer now and to discuss it with all together before we close in five minutes. Any questions? Okay, so far no questions. Okay, thanks a lot for your attendance and wish you all uh, the good luck. Uh, kindly fill up all your comments uh, and or uh, whatever uh, in the evaluation form that you will receive. And we'll happy to see you again and to join with us again in the next courses. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. Thank you.